Hello everyone, it is Summary Saturday where I give you a brief overview of yesterday's Finance Friday topic. So yesterday we discussed why women should think more like men when it comes to our finances. And I know this sounds crazy coming from a women's personal finance blog, but since starting this blog, so much of the information that I have seen that's geared towards women comes from the uh, scarcity mentality. And that just means that you think that there's not enough money in the world and so you need to preserve any of it that you have. And the information that's geared towards men typically comes from an abundance mentality. And that means that you think there's a lot of money in the world and you need to figure out what tools you can use to bring more of that to yourself. So um, my goal with this blog has always been to help women make informed financial decisions and grow their wealth and start to bridge the gender income gap. And so when I see this, uh, these tips coming from a scarcity mindset, it's, it's great to have a lot of those small wins, but it really distracts from the larger opportunities that you have available to you to really make a much larger impact and grow your wealth. So today I'm going to talk to you about two of the things that I see all the time um, marketed toward women since starting this journey and why you shouldn't use them and what you can do instead to actually grow your money more. So the first one of these is no spend days. So I had never heard of this until like a few months ago and now I see it everywhere and I just, it blows my mind. So a no spend day basically means that you only are allowed to spend money on necessities and then anything else that you spend money on is deemed bad. And on the days where you spend money on things that you don't actually need, then you put an X on your calendar and that is a, a bad day or whatever. Um, so it's hard enough, I think, to start on a personal finance journey and really understanding your money. And there's so much jargon that's used in the industry and so many different things that you're supposed to be doing with your money. So adding this amount of guilt and pressure onto yourself when you're starting this, to me, I just it can't imagine. So this reminded me of when you see like, especially around um, New Year's resolutions and people who don't work out at all and eat whatever they want decide, I wanna get in shape and I'm gonna start going to the gym every day and I'm only gonna eat like fruits and vegetables. And what happens is that they never stick to that plan they end up feeling really guilty when they can't stick to that plan and they don't see any progress. And I think that no spend days are kind of the same thing. It's just with your finances. So budgeting is great and understanding where your money is going and what you're using it for is really important. And that's awesome. But just because you understand that, you don't have to stop spending any of it. So um, another thing that I see promoted for no with no spend days is that once you save all this money from your no spend days, then you should allocate that toward paying your debt off sooner. And this is a wealth building strategy that they the tote, I guess, or whatever. <laughs> and this does not build wealth. This is a, a misconception. So wealth building means that you are generating income from your investments or other wealth built or other income generating assets. Paying off your debt sooner saves you money on interest, but it does not build your wealth. So um, let's look at some numbers for this. So if you saved $100 every day for 30 or every month for 30 years using no spend days, you would save $36,000. If you took that $36,000 and applied those $100 monthly savings in to like in an excess of your mortgage payment on a $250 mortgage, $250,000 mortgage, $250 would be pretty nice. But um, with a 3% interest rate over 30 years, you would save $19,000 in interest. If you took that $100 a month and instead invested it in stocks and received the average annual return on the stock market, you would have $226,000 after 30 years, 190,000 of which you would have earned from it, your investments. Only $36,000 you would have still contributed. So it is clear that the larger opportunity for wealth building is in investing and not in paying down your debt sooner. So now I know you're thinking, okay, well, but to get that $100, I still have to 
track my no spend days and feel all the guilt with that. No, you don't. If you have a budget, if you don't have a budget, you should understand a little bit about what you are spending your money on. But if you're tracking no spend days, you already know this. So all you have to do is allocate a monthly amount into an investment account. You can set up auto payments into this investment account and treat it just like any other expense, rent, your debt payments, whatever. It go, it's, it comes out of your account automatically. And then once you have that out, any other money you have left over at the end of the month, you can use on whatever you want and you do not have to feel guilty about it because you have paid all your bills and you're investing. So that's how you can get around no spend days and still build wealth without any guilt. So the second tip that I see all the time is that basically if you're not trying to be debt free ASAP, you are doing it wrong. And that is just not true. So you can be very financially healthy and making good decisions with your money and not have the goal of paying off your debt as soon as humanly possible. So is that humanly possible? Is that correct there? I don't know. Anyway, so <laughs> um, then this is because of um, opportunity cost. So opportunity cost is the missed opportunity that you have when you select an item. So basically, if you decide to use your extra money to pay down your debt sooner, you miss the opportunity of the earnings you could have received by investing that money. If you invest the money, you miss the opportunity of saving money on your interest. So with every decision, there's an opportunity cost. And if you have high interest debt, like credit card debt, um, or a, a high debt to income ratio, I would recommend that you try to get your debt in a better situation first before investing. But if you're making all your minimum debt payments, you have a healthy debt to income ratio, and you don't have any high interest debt, then you should allocate the rest to investing. Because as we saw in the earlier example I gave, there's a lot more money to be made by investing than there is to save money on your interest. So the opportunity cost is higher by not investing. So um, this is how I think that, you know, these tips are holding women back by penny pinching, focusing on these really small wins when there are much larger wins to be had. And it's really important that we start to make that shift in our minds that there is an abundance of money and we can bring a lot more of it to ourselves without focusing on the minutia. So I hope you found this helpful and it helps you get on a faster track to building wealth. So thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you have a great rest of your weekend and I will see you next week. Thanks.